Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to learn how to make this dino slide cake. So first we're going to start off with two 8 inch sponges. Now I did these sort of like a rainbow marble effect on the inside. We're going to trim off the base of the bottom one and we're going to just make the middle of the slide first. So it's a little bit too big so I'm just going to take a little bit more off. And then we're going to bulk out the sides. Now I could have done this with uh, sort of like a sphere uh, tin, you know, sort of like a half uh, circle tin. Um, but I just felt like the uh, cake would have been too flat rather than uh, coming up to the height that I wanted it to. So you're just going to build up the sides. It's quite a fat dinosaur that I did. Um, so the middle bit, which is the thickest bit, is going to have the slide. And the other two sides are going to be sort of like it's waist and we want a chunk for the neck so we want to create sort of like a smooth line that's going to go over the hump and down to form the neck so I'm just wedging some more in there I'm just trimming off the edges of the cake now I took a bit out the middle uh, on this one to create sort of like a a bit for the actual silver slide bit to go um, but then I decided that actually I didn't want that there, so you wouldn't have to chop that out. So once you've done one cake, you're then going to move on to doing the other side, just to blend it all in and taking off sort of like the edges of the cake and just smoothing it over. You want to create quite a, sort of like a fat ball shape, or maybe like a an igloo shape would be. A, probably the best way to describe it and you're just going to match the same on the other side so I did this all with just the two 8 inch cakes which were around about I would say maybe 2 inches deep each so there you can see me chopping out the middle bit but I wouldn't do that I never ended up using that bit anyway so once you've got all the cake cut we're then going to look at filling the cake with some buttercream so the biggest layer I've chopped in half and I've just sandwiched some buttercream in the middle of there and then I'm just going to fill in the sides because they're relatively thin slices of cake as well I didn't split those in half again I just filled buttercream either side and then cover that with some buttercream just to make it stick and then we're just going to do the same for the other side. And then pushing it back together. So you can see at the minute it just looks like a bit of a fat blob. <laughs> and we're going to cover it in ganache. So I've covered it in ganache because it's a bit more stable. I do have a video in how to make ganache. Um, and how to cover a cake in ganache if you wanted to do just a simple circle uh, but I've got a flexi smoother and I'm just using that to remove any excess ganache from the cake so we're crumb coating it first it's just a really thin layer just to seal in all the crumbs so you can see I'm just pushing it on and then smoothing it over with the flexi smoother now I'm using this because it allows me to create sort of like a a different shape I can fold it to make it more rounded um, and things like that so once you've kind of finished the crumb coat and you've got all the bits sealed in it would just need I would say about 10 minutes just to firm up before you can apply the second layer um, and at this point this is when it really starts to look you know like an, an igloo so when you're using your flexi smoothie you're looking to get rid of all the little lines that we're making uh, it needs to kind of be one smooth blob so that once you put your fondant on top you're not seeing any of the lines that are underneath. So you can see that I'm just going down the bit of the slide there so that's going to form the neck of the dinosaur. And so once you've finished you're going to have something that looks like this. I've got some white fondant and we're just going to create another wedge and this is going to form a bit of the slide just with the fondant. 
so it doesn't need to be too neat and you can trim off any excess if you want to and it wants to be quite thin at one side kind of like a bit like a doorstop I would say and it's just going to give us a smooth uh, join from the rest uh, of the body it would be a bit too fiddly to do it with cake because it's a bit small and you're just going to cover it over with ganache until you've got that nice straight line So next we're going to create a tail, so again just like a fat um, oval shape I would say with a point at one end and we're just going to chop, chop off the back to make it flat, give it a little bit of a bend and just make sure that it fits on the board and we're just going to attach that the same way, the ganache will still be sticky, sticky at this point so you can just stick it on straight to the ganache. Just try and smooth over any of the lines as well that I've got. So here's what you should have when it's dry. And I've just coloured some fondant just in a really light green and we're just going to cover the whole thing uh, in the green fondant. Remembering that we've got the tail there at the back as well and you're just going to push the uh, fondant into all the little nooks and crannies and again I've got a smaller flexi smoother and I'm just running that around the top of the slide. So you can see it's quite smooth. Just trim off any excess with the knife and we're going to put this aside later because we're going to use this for grass as well. So you want to tuck in all your edges, make sure all your edges are nice and neat, we don't want them hanging over from the cake onto the board. You can trim them off with a knife and you can tuck them in as well if it's just a tiny little bit and just smoothing over everything to make sure we can't see any lines or any bumps or anything like that. So once you've covered the whole body, we're going to roll out two strips of the same coloured fondant as before um, and they just need to be fairly thin and these are going to go down either side um, of the dinosaur. Now these are going to be what uh, the actual colour, the silver bit of the slide sits in and we're just going to stick these on with a little bit of um, water or edible glue. Try not to use too much because we are going to airbrush this cake so once we start airbrushing if there's any sort of water that's not dried um, it can affect the, the airbrush. So if you put a blob on the cake I would always recommend leaving it to dry. We're going to trim it off at the top because at the back we're going to have some ladders that will uh, obviously be the back of the slide. And next we're just going to do the face. So I've just rolled out a thicker piece of fondant and we're just going to chop a line in either side, um, flatten it off at the bottom just to give it like a bit of a playful uh, dinosaur type mouth. It doesn't have to be anything too complex. We're sort of basing it similar to you know the characters in Peppa Pig um, so they are quite basic shapes just rounding off the edge and you're going to create another one for the other side. So always just checking it for size against the um, the board and the slide that we've made and we're going to do exactly the same for the other side. So once you've got two we're then going to put in some eye holes. So I've just got a really tiny ball tool and I'm just going to create some little eye holes on both. Again because we're basing it on sort of Peppa Pig characters, they are quite simplistic, so it doesn't need to be anything too complicated. And we're just going to stick these on with a little bit of water. Now you can pop something between the mouth if you struggle to keep it open. Um, but once it's actually dried, uh, you know, it, it does stay up. So you can see there, I've just put some fondant just to keep the mouth open while it dries. And on the other side, creating the same eye sockets as before. 
and just sticking that on with water as well. Just propping that up and again with some fondant just rolled up and in the mouth. So for the airbrush I use chroma colours, so I've just got the chroma green and just going to get my airbrush. So they're really simple to connect, you just want to put the pipe on the bottom, that will attach to your compre compressor and you're going to put a little bit of green in the top and then we're literally just going to cover the whole cake in the green colouring. You want to hold your brush at a fair distance away, so always test on a bit of paper. And you can see I'm quite far away from the cake. I don't want to get too close because once you get too close you're going to start to put splodges um, on the cake. At this point it doesn't matter if we colour the board. The reason that I haven't put the grass on, even though the grass will be green, is that I don't want it to catch too much of this that's going to drop off. You want to pay close attention to um, any kind of creases or uh, bits, you know, sort of like that would have a natural shadow and put an extra bit of green on there. So you can see I'm just going back and forth, making sure that I've got everywhere. It doesn't matter if it's not too even because, you know, a dinosaur is not all one colour. It's not a flat colour at all. And you definitely want to do this before you've put the eyes in. So, you know, please don't at this point put the white eyes in because they would just get covered in green. So these colours do quite... Uh, do dry quite quickly so you will be able to sort of put you know a next layer on if you feel like it needs it so once you've coloured it all in the green we're then going to take some of the turquoise colour and again just put a light spray of this over the top of the green that we've already put in and then we're going to create some dots and so you're literally just pressing your brush holding it in the in uh, one place until it gets that dark patch and you're going to do this throughout the body try not to get too close because you don't want it to run you literally are just looking for a really nice sort of soft little blob and you can put as many on as you want or as little you could even do this pink if you was doing it for a girl and do purple blobs and just anywhere you feel like needs one, just put one on there. And just cover the whole thing as well because you want to create a bit of depth. So I've got some triangles that I've cut out from a darker green. And these I'm just going to put a little bit of water and I'm going to stick these down the back. This is going to be where we put the steps later on. You just want to push them in place and make sure that they come from down the back of the dinosaur onto the tail. And you want to do the same for the other side. So remember that leftover green that we had? We're going to cover the board. And so I've just rolled it out quite thin and I've chopped out a little bit of a circle area, which is what's going to fit around the dinosaur's belly. And you're just going to push this into place with your fingers. Now it doesn't matter if there's any lines that are on there because we are going to stipple it with a brush just to give it a little bit of texture. So as long as it's kind of smooth, you know, if you smooth it over with your hands, there's no real need to smooth it over with a smoother because again, I said that, you know, we are going to stipple it with a brush. So to stipple it, you just need a brush that's quite... Um, got thick bristles and you're just going to literally dab this all over the cake. This is the biggest one that I had. Feel free to get a bigger one because it can take quite a while. And you want to do it while the fondant's uh, moist so I'll do this before I do the other side. If it starts to set you're not going to get um, many brush marks in it all.
and then you're just going to take your little bits out of your mouth and we're going to do the other side. So again, the same process as before, I've cut out the semicircle and you're just going to push the paste into the dragon, uh, not dragon, sorry, into the dinosaur. Don't forget the bit around the mouth as well. And again, you're just going to stipple this with your brush. So once you've covered that full area with your brush, we're then going to put on some um, bushes. So I've got a cloud cutter here, and I just tend to cut out those shapes and then trim the bottom off so it's flat, and then that forms my brush. Bush. A little bit of water underneath and just giving it a little bit of a arch when you stick it onto the board. You could do quite a couple of these. I think the cutter set that I've got for the clouds came in uh, four different uh, sizes so you could use different ones. For the little tufts of grass I've just rolled out um, a bit of fondant and just cut that with a knife at an angle. Left it thicker at the bottom and then just stuck that on rolled it up into a ball and then stuck that on. So you can see it's thinner at one side. We're going to chop into it, just removing the excess, trim off some of the bottom and then roll into a, a circle and then just using a little bit of water just to stick that on. So now we're going to airbrush the board. So I'm going to use the same green as what I did before. And you just want to do a really light spray you don't want to do anything too close to the dinosaur because you don't want to make it too dark. Remember to turn the board around and do behind the clouds. Uh, sorry, not clouds, the bushes. Uh, because it, obviously because the bush is there, it's then um, stopped the airbrush from getting further back. So to make it a bit darker, I've just added a little bit of black into the green. And I'm just going to respray over this area just to create a bit darker. Again, it's alright if it's a bit patchy because it's supposed to be grass and grass is different shades depending you know, on how much sunlight I guess it's had and stuff like that. And you can go around and do some darker dots on your dinosaur as well. So I've got some tiny white pieces that we're just going to roll into sausage shapes and we're going to stick these on for the eyes. You shouldn't actually need any water because it should actually still be quite sticky from the airbrush. You're going to do these for the other side as well, just push them into place. We've got a grey piece of fondant cut into a long strip and this is going to form the base of the slide. It's always better to put this on when it's had time to dry a little bit because you don't want the, um, it to take off any of the excess green. So it's just about trying it on and seeing what will fit. And if you have to take any off, remember less is more. Once you've taken off too much, you'll have to roll the whole thing out again. We're just going to push that down and just trim off any excess from the top. So you should have something that looks like that. We've got a little bit of a red tongue, so I've just cut some fondant in red with a triangle at the bottom for the tongue. So here I've got some pink flowers just to decorate. This was for a girl, um, which is why I chose pink flowers. The floor should be wet enough that it doesn't actually need any um, water to stick these on. I'm just going to place them wherever you feel looks best. I've got some tiny little sprinkles and I'm just going to use these for the centres of the flowers. You can use whatever colour you want. I think I chose white to use. Um, and you're just going to put a little bit of water in the middle of the flower just to stick it on. Now I left a space at the front on purpose because it had quite a long message on did this cake um, and so I just used, I think it was a Katie Sue mould for the writing 
Um, and you want to go ahead and fill in all of the flowers with the um, sprinkles. And then I've just got some little grey strips just to create the steps on the back of the dinosaur. Just sticking these on again with a little bit of water. You could use um, edible glue if you wanted to. So just neatening up the back of the slide. So you should have something at the minute that looks like this. I've got some tiny black dots, you can barely even see them at the minute. And we're just going to use these for the eyes. So just sticking those on. Um, I find it easier to stick it on than I do to paint it on. Once it's painted on you can't change it. But if you stick it on you can move it around. So I've made George Pig and he's going to sit on top of this cake. Now George is not included in this tutorial because I do have another tutorial already in which I show you how to make George and how to make um, his dinosaur. That tutorial is for a standing George. Obviously this is a sitting George. If you wanted to make the standing one a sitting one, you would just do everything the same from you know, the belly upwards and then you would just make the feet separate um, along with the legs and then just stick them on as I'm doing now. So it's just all just a little bit of water that I'm pushing it on with. You want to make sure that the legs aren't too long. See, I've only got short legs. And I've put him in his red wellies. We're just going to stick his arms on with a little bit of water. So with the dinosaur, again, if you use, um, the only difference is for this one is when you're making the dinosaur, if you make the body first on the cocktail stick, that sticks into the slide with a little bit of water. And then the feet are what's put on then to hide the, um, the cocktail stick because obviously the slide's at an angle. So you can still see the cocktail stick there, but once you've put the feet on, the feet actually hide the cocktail stick quite well. So here's the finished cake. I do hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. Please hit the uh, thumbs up button down below and don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to see more of my videos, please click the links on the screen now. Thank you.